Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, former President Jimmy Carter entering home hospice care in Georgia. We have the latest on the oldest living president in your morning headlines. Back here at home, a man is in the hospital after a shooting on the city's west side near Memorial High School. What we've learned about the suspects, that's coming up. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City, starting off at 46, a lot warmer than what we saw yesterday. Mia Montgomery joining us this morning for your full forecast. And of course, what is President's Day going to look like? But for now, good morning. It is 6 o'clock. It is Sunday, February 19th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Happy Do you want to tell people the chaos with the phone oh that started God. your morning? I don't have a phone. No. So therefore, I don't know how I even got to case. It's just impressive. My dog woke dog, me up. Dog, the hero. He just was like, hey, hey, it, it's 415. You got to get up this morning. Um, so yeah, tech, life is hard without a phone. You know what? It's just one of those and things. And I can't, I don't even know what the temperature was. I didn't check I, the temperature. didn't know what the weather was outside, doing. walk outside, Mia. Just a shameless plug to the KSAT weather app. Exactly. <laughs> it's what you check every morning, right? Before you head out the door. A hundred percent. Of course. Well, yes, uh, I'm sure as soon as you stepped outside, you realized that it is chilly out there, but not near as cold as where we were this time yesterday. And really the big story heading into this afternoon is going to be those noticeably warmer temperatures compared to what we saw throughout the first half of the weekend's plans. Right now we're in the 40s, a few low 50s out there. 46 over at SA International waking up this Sunday. 47 in Comfort, still 52 over in Canyon Lake. Even some upper 30s though, especially just to the west of Bear County. 39 in Rio Medina, stretching over to Hondo as well. Now we're monitoring the dew points. Right now they're also a lot higher than where we were just 24 hours ago. As of this hour, we don't really have any issues in terms terms of lowered visibilities or fog out there, but I do think by this time tomorrow morning and especially into our Tuesday morning, we likely will need to allot some extra time for any morning drive plans and things of that nature. But here's your day planner throughout the remainder of the weekend. Again, we're in the 40s and 50s right now. We'll be near about 58 by 10 a.m. We've also got the low level cloud cover in place in spots this morning. I do think we will find some more peaks of sunshine though heading into this afternoon and you can really see what that's going to do to our temperatures. Those daytime highs are headed for the mid 70s here in San Antonio around 75. Now as we head into the first half of the upcoming work week, the humidity is going to build. Those temperatures are going to continue to warm and we only have a small rain chance that moves in overnight Tuesday and into early Wednesday as our next front moves in. We'll time all of that out and get you a look at the upcoming week ahead coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Now to some late breaking news. San Antonio police searching for the suspect responsible for a possible aggravated robbery at a La Quintera apartment garage. GMSA is Alyssa Cole joining us live now. Alyssa, where are you and what have police told you so far? Yes, I'm here at the residences or the residents at La Cantera Apartments. This incident happened just a few moments ago. It's still a pretty active scene. Investigators are carrying out their investigation right now. The crime scene unit arrived a few moments ago. The good news is no one died here at the scene. There was no fatalities. This is what police has told us. I'll take a step aside so you all can see the scene here. A few moments ago, I would say just uh, before 5 a.m., a man pulled into the garage here at the apartment complex. He was, uh, of course, attempting to get back to his apartment. That's when a male, teenage Hispanic male, approached him and attempted to rob him. Now, shots were fired during that incident um, because that teenager, this police believe that is a teenager, had a fire on, firearm on him, and the suspect also pistol with the victim as well. He has lacerations to his head, so he had the injuries. He did not go to the hospital. He was treated here at the scene by San Antonio Fire EMS. He is expected to be okay. Of course, he's in stable condition, but right now investigators are searching for that suspect that was responsible for this incident. They do have the area blocked off right now. There actually are some people um, arriving, coming back in a little early right now this morning, and it'll be maybe about 15 minutes or so if you are trying to gain access to the garage here. It may be just a little while longer, but it shouldn't take long at all. And again, police are looking for that suspect. If you have any information at all, if you happen to be here in the garage, if you happen to be awake at this time, you are encouraged to con contact Crime Stoppers at 224 STOP. Reporting live in La Cantera, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News.
Thank you, Alyssa. New this morning, charges are expected for two men accused of shooting another man on the city's west side near Memorial High School. San Antonio police say a man in his early 50s was visiting a friend at home on Pickford Avenue just before one this morning. They say they walked up to the door and two men approached him and asked why he was in their front yard. Moments later, the two suspects got angry. One pulled a gun and shot the man in the chest. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police have the two suspects in custody. In your morning headlines, former President Jimmy Carter entering home hospice care in Georgia. The 98-year-old is the oldest living president. ABC's Derek Dennis brings us the latest from his family. The 39th president, Jimmy Carter, is now receiving hospice care at his home in Plains, Georgia. The Carter Center saying in a statement that after a series of hospital stays, Carter decided to receive hospice care instead of additional medical intervention. He has the full support of his family and his medical team. While they want privacy, the statement added his family is grateful for the concern shown by so many of his admirers. And his grandson took to Twitter Saturday to say, I saw both of my grandparents yesterday. They are at peace and as always their home is full of love thank you all for your kind words carter is 98 years old and both the oldest living president and the longest lived u.s president he has battled health issues in recent years including hip surgery in 2019 and in 2015 he battled cancer that had spread to his liver and brain carter is the only president from georgia he served in the white house from 1977 to 1981 after Leaving office, he and his wife Rosalind opened the Carter Center, earning a Nobel Peace Prize in 2002 for his work there. He is also well known for his work with Habitat for Humanity, building homes for those in need. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, nine boys and girls under the age of 18 were wounded in a shooting at a at Columbus, Georgia gas station Friday night. One of the victims was a five year old boy who was hit by that gunfire while there with a family member. So shots rang out when a group of minors attending a nearby party got into a fight that continued into the gas station's parking lot. It's unclear who opened fire and no charges have been announced so far. Well, that FedEx contract driver accused of killing seven-year-old Athena Strand in North Texas. Well, the suspect now indicted thanks to a grand jury facing charges of capital murder and aggravated kidnapping. The Fort Worth Star-Telegram reports 31-year-old Tanner Horner confessed to the crime, told them where the body was, Athena's body, the seven-year-old. They're also reporting that Wise County Sheriff Lane Atkin talking to prosecutors about seeking the death penalty for Horner. He remains in jail on a $1.5 million bond. And police are investigating a deadly fall at Disneyland Saturday night. First responders in Anaheim, California, say they found an adult woman on the ground near a Disney Resort parking area. She was pronounced dead at a local hospital. Police say they're still investigating what could have caused this woman's fall. Time now, 608, 46 degrees out. So to come on GMSA, we'll head up to Austin, where San Antonio swimmers competed in the UIL state championship meet. How each swimmer did, that's coming up. And of course, it is all-star weekend for the NBA. Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan making some noise after his performance in the Rising Stars Challenge. What he's saying about his unique free throw routine that's helping him succeed in just his first year. I think Shaq should have tried it, I'm just saying. 46 degrees at 608, a warmer start, a much warmer start than what we had yesterday, even though we're just saying 46. Hey, but Mia Montgomery is in the house this morning. She's going to have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go Spurs rookie Jeremy Sohan, one of the three rooks on the roster, and he was one of the young stars to participate in the Rising Stars Challenge. The first night of All-Star Weekend in Utah. His first appearance, look at that, throwing down a pair of impressive dunks. He would finish with six points, one of his three baskets, an and one opportunity. So, of course, pulled out the wait for it. Gotta love it. The one-handed free throw, big stage, but he didn't let the situation change the unique approach at the strike. I mean, it's, it's worked out great. Um, I feel like uh, I was like 40-something percent from, from the free throw with two hands, and um, now I'm like 81, 82 with, with one hand. So, I mean, it's helped me a lot, and I think it's made me, you know, even more aggressive. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's something 
that is it's pretty cool to you know show because you know not not a lot of people I think would do that so um, it just shows who I am and I think it's cool. I think it's cool too. What I didn't think was cool was the angle because we couldn't see his hair. Look at that. Come on. Anything? Nothing? Spurs? I'm, I'm Are those Spurs? Cool. Yeah, yes. it's like Fiesta colors. Come Aww. on. There we go. All right, Not so Sohan and the Spurs return to action this coming Thursday, taking on the Mavericks in Dallas. So there you go. Very excited. And also, last night, three-point contest and dunk contest. Dunk contest not that cool anymore because there's, like, no stars doing it. But shout-out to Mac Wait, McCong. Wait, why don't any stars do it? It's like a risk-reward thing. They don't want to risk oh. it. And then if you lose, it's like, I'm going to lose to... Yeah. Oh, they don't want to uh, rupture their Achilles. Yeah, no, no one wants no to do that. No one wants to <laughs> do yeah, that. Team Achilles rupture, we so understand. stay far away. So we don't dunk. We don't need to do anything <laughs> remotely close to that, I guess. That's fair. All right, Mia, thank you for joining us. A lot warmer than what we saw yesterday. Yes, and that's really kind of the big story for the back half of the weekend's plans. Overall, this afternoon, I know we've got the Brahma's game, Ooh. all of that good stuff happening here in San Antonio. Temperatures are going to be pretty nice out there. Yes, it's chilly right now, waking up in the 40s across a good portion of the area. But as we head into this afternoon, while we still will find maybe a few clouds out there, I do think we will see more peaks of sunshine compared to the low level cloud cover that's in place right now. Overall, temperatures, though, headed for the 70s. That's compared to the 50s that we saw for daytime highs yesterday. Now the humidity is also going to build as we head into the first half of the upcoming work week, which means some patchy morning fog is expected tomorrow morning. And then again, as we head into our Tuesday morning, but still the temperature trend is going to continue to warm through about Wednesday. And then as we head into that time frame, Tuesday night into early Wednesday, we're going to see a weak front move in. As of right now, it doesn't look to pack too big of a punch in terms of cooling those temperatures down, but it will potentially spark a small rain chance and also make things pretty windy as we head into midweek as well. We'll start off here with a look at satellite and radar again. You can see that cloud cover that is pushing across South Central Texas here this Sunday morning. Still plenty chilly temperatures at about 46 over at SA International, a dew point of 40. So again, when those numbers, the dew point temperature and the air temperature start to get closer together. That's when the air is closer to saturating. We start to see some of that fog development as of right now, not really seeing any huge issues in terms of reduced visibility. So that is good. But again, we'll keep eyes on it here over the next couple of hours. Mostly cloudy skies throughout the first half of the day, especially temperatures warming into the mid 60s by any lunchtime plans. And then as we start to see some of that break up into the afternoon, those daytime highs headed for the warmer than average 70s around 75 is that forecast high here in town this afternoon. 75 in New Braunfels, stretching over to Seguin. 77 in Floresville, as well as Poteet out there in northern Atascosa County. 75 in Sabinal and 72 up in Bandera later this afternoon as well. So we've got the south winds in place today. That's going to continue through the overnight hours tonight and especially into our Monday. So you can see what that's going to do to our dew points, how we measure that low level moisture in the air. Those dew points will continue to rise and that will likely lead to those areas of fog developing by the morning drive time tomorrow. So already planning out your day tomorrow, probably a good idea to give yourself a little bit of extra time headed out the door and again into our Tuesday forecast high temperatures into the upcoming work week, a little bit warmer tomorrow compared to what we're expected to find out there this afternoon around 78 here in San Antonio. How about low to even potentially mid 80s Tuesday and into Wednesday and then we'll see that week front move in Wednesday into Thursday with those slightly cooler temperatures trying to move in, but still warmer than average for this time of year in the upper 70s. Area of low pressure off to our west. That is the next system to watch in terms of that small rain chance that moves in with that weak front into the overnight hours on Tuesday and early Wednesday. As of right now, the better energy looks to be just to the north of our area. So we'll just call it about a 20% chance isolated for a few showers into early Wednesday morning. And then after that, the big story is going to be the wind on Wednesday was still warmer than average temperatures for the second half of the week. I mean, come on. This is amazing. Do you like so you, we're a fan of the warmer weather? We're a fan of the 70s to 80s 
Yeah, in no, the midst of I like February. that. We yes. do need some rain. We do. And right. so I wish that that rain chance Tuesday night was a little bit higher because you're right. We desperately do need it. We'll see where the data takes us over the next few days. Thank you, Mia. You bet. Thank you, Mia. 617, 46 degrees now. After the break, we'll check in on some of our area swimmers as they competed at the UIL State Championships in Austin. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. UIL high school swimming season coming to a close yesterday and it happened in Austin, the Class 6A State Championship. And take a look, a lot of representation from San Antonio. Johnson senior Jada Scott ending her high school career in style. Two goals, first in the 50 yard freestyle, a time of 22.42 seconds. And then the second, the 100 yard breaststroke, just over a minute. It's definitely a big deal to me basically because like throughout the four years I've been here I've been gradually working my way up. Like freshman year I don't I didn't get any I didn't make it on the podium. Sophomore year we made it to the podium. Junior year also made it to the podium and now my senior year now they have two golds instead of like silvers I'm very happy with that. Reagan sophomore Monse Spellman putting on a show as well in the 100 yard butterfly taking third in the 200 yard freestyle roughly a half hour earlier. They came in strong on the back half. First overall, 53.42 seconds, winning by a huge 9 one hundredths of a second. And she can now celebrate like a state champ. All right, speaking of accolades, over in Class 5A, congratulations to Bernie champion senior Griff Orloff, tied for first place in the 100-yard breaststroke, a time of 56.37 seconds. The Charger boys also posting a school record in the 200-yard freestyle relay, taking silver as a team. The Bernie champion boys finishing fifth in the state. And get this, the best finish in their school's program history. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. And before we go to break, four wrestlers had a chance to win state titles in one area. And then wrestler is one area wrestler is bringing home the gold. Congrats to Uvalde sophomore George Rodriguez. He completed an impressive 44 and one season with a pin in the first period of his class 5A 120 pound championship. The other three wrestlers brought home the silver. We have those links and full results and highlights from that state tournament right now on KSAT.com. Go Brahmas. Go Brahmas. <laughs> Today we're going to have a full preview throughout the show. And of course we have a KSAT, KSAT Insider event. Going on this, at the Dome. This is a fan, by the way. It's not like a giant like pickleball paddle. That's what I thought it was originally. Just letting y'all know about that. <laughs> Thank you for that explanation. 623, 46 degrees out. <laughs> Up next, at before 630, bull riders at the rodeo had a tough time reaching eight seconds Saturday night. We have those highlights coming up. Rodeo San Antonio heading to the stock show and rodeo for some bull riding. Brady Portnier on Indian Larry and saying he's on it is a loose term. Look at that. His <gasps> arm gets stuck, almost gets oh. away without a kick. Almost looks like it hurts. Only one rider went the full eight seconds last night. That was Trey Met in the third. Riding shakedown to the ride itself looks pretty good. Gets an 86 for his trouble, but watch this. Once the timer's up, he. I mean, this is very impressive. I get, and then he gets stuck. So oh no, finally oh no. dismounts, oh the, char no. the bull charges straight over him. He went full eight seconds, but the bull was not a fan. Thankfully, again, all of them are okay. Look at that. I'm glad the they're okay. Up. And shout out to those, uh, to the rodeo clowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... Shout out to everyone involved, because that is, <laughs> what does uh, our producer Colin keep saying? The toughest sport on dirt? Toughest sport on dirt, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm. All right, time now, 627, 46 degrees out. Well, coming up at 630, San Antonio firefighters tackle a house fire in the city's south side. We have that preview, plus new information on the late-breaking shooting on the city's north side. And recent disasters have people thinking about emergency preparedness, how local first responders are making sure they have the skills necessary to save lives just in case of a mass emergency. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. 6.31 this morning. It is February 19th. Thank you so much for starting happy your Sunday. morning with us. Did you make it out and about yesterday? I did. Nice. We went furniture. We went to Ikea. Went to Ikea. You know, that, that, that's live a whole Oak? thing. Yeah. That's a whole day. It's a whole day. I think I, I, I did uh, two miles just walking. Just walking in around the, Ikea. In the, but afterwards, I went on my normal walk. Okay. Bundled up. 
Yeah. It was cold. Okay, what time did you go? A uh, little late, like at 5 p.m. Oh, yeah, that is a little late. It, All right. There was no sun, Mia, by that time. It was... <laughs> Bring us the sun, yeah, yeah. Mia. <laughs> I think later this afternoon we'll find more set. I'll tell you what I've always wanted to do at Ikea is, yes, go spend the day there, but, like, do the dinner thing, too, like how you can oh. go get the food. We contemplated okay. that. Okay, I've never done it, but it's on my bucket list I've just for fun. I've heard that the meatballs there are, like... Delicious. Because why wouldn't they be? Delicious. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You could make it a whole day affair <laughs> if you really, really wanted to. All right, let's get you a look at current conditions outside this morning. Again, not as cold as where we were this time yesterday, but it is still chilly. So if you're stepping out early this morning, you like likely will want the extra layer, but you're probably not going to need it by later this afternoon because the big story throughout the second half of the weekend's plans going to be those noticeably warmer temperatures this afternoon, especially compared to what we saw out there yesterday. So we're in the 40s, a few low 50s, 50 right now over at Randolph on the east side of the county, 42 at Kelly, 46 at Stinson, the same reading over at SA International here this 6 a.m. hour. Dew point still pretty dry out there, which is why those temperatures are still pretty chilly this morning, but they are higher than where we were 24 hours ago, and that's going to be the theme, especially by tomorrow morning and into Tuesday morning. That's where we could find some areas of fog out there for both the Monday and Tuesday morning drives. We'll monitor for maybe a few isolated areas of patchy fog this morning. So far, we really haven't seen any issues in terms of reduced visibility, but we do have more cloud cover in place this morning. I do think by this afternoon, though, we'll see some of that break up a bit more, leading way to more peaks of sunshine, and that is going to help those temperatures crank back up. So around 58 by 10 a.m. here later this morning, approaching 70 as we head into the early afternoon hours and then mid 70s in store for those daytime highs across a good portion of South Central Texas later today. Three big headlines into the upcoming work week. The warming trend takes over. We will see those thermometers continue to trend upward. Over the next few days, that humidity will continue to build into Monday and Tuesday, leading to some areas of patchy fog each morning. So we'll keep eyes on that as well as a small rain chance. It looks to move in Tuesday night and early Wednesday as we see a weak cold front move in. We'll time all of that out and get you to the details on what we're expecting with that small rain chance coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Back to that late breaking news. A man walking away, luckily, with only minor injuries this morning after what police describe as a possible aggravated robbery at a Lock and Terra apartment complex. Yeah, so this incident happened just a little over an hour ago. Our GMSA's Alyssa Cole live from that location. So, Alyssa, what have police told you? Yes, good morning. That attempt of that possible aggravated robbery happened right here in the garage of the residents at La Contera Apartments. This is what police told us this is what happened. So just a few moments before uh, the five o'clock hour, we were told that a male suspect they believe to be a Hispanic teenager approached a man inside the garage building here as that man was trying to park his car. He, they believe, or they say that the suspect had a firearm and shots were fired and that suspect tried to of course attack that victim and he did pistol whip him so he has lacerations on his head but he is expected to be okay he was treated by the san antonio fire ems here at the scene um that suspect he was able to get away uh they say he believed they believe he's driving a dark truck um, but they say he did not get away with any items or any money um you know investigators they are wrapping up here their work and they believe uh, that this victim them could be close by. They're not sure. They're asking people to send in any tips if they happen to see or if they saw, if they heard anything uh, around the time of that incident. That was just before five o'clock this morning. If you have any information, they're asking you to call San Antonio Crime Stoppers at 224 STOP. There will be more information on our website later this morning. Reporting live in La Contera, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. New this morning, charges are expected for two men accused of shooting another man on the city's west side near Memorial High School. San Antonio police say a man in his early 50s was visiting a friend at a home on Pickford Avenue just before one this morning. They say he walked up to the door and two men approached him and asked him why they were in their front yard. Moments later, the two suspects got angry. One pulled a gun and shot the man in the chest. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Police have those two suspects in custody.
Also new this morning, San Antonio firefighters hard at work overnight working on a house fire on the city south side. So take a look. Flames breaking out of this home near South Florida just after 1 a.m. Firefighters able to contain the flames to just one room. And the family who lives there, they weren't there. No reported injuries. Still investigators working to figure out how this all started. Well, El Paso police officials say they have a 16 year old in custody who they believe opened fire at that mall where one person died and two more were injured. And now we have new information on how the alleged shooter was stopped. In a statement released Friday, El Paso police identified an armed bystander as 32 year old Emmanuel Duran, a licensed to carry holder. After the shooting ended, the teen suspect allegedly began to run and pointed his gun towards bystanders. That's when police say Dudon drew his handgun and shot the suspect, who remains hospitalized. Police say charges against the suspect are expected soon. Meanwhile, in Pernales, Electric Coop held their first board meeting since the ice storm that caused extensive outages for people across the hill country. So board members say improving the outage map during possibly dangerous weather, that's their top priority. Customers say the outage map was simply not providing accurate restoration times. PEC says they're obviously aware of people's frustration throughout the community, and they say the outage map cal calculates restoration times based on the historical data or can be adjusted by staff manually entering those restoration times. Now, PEC says that staff struggle to enter those updated times while managing, get this, nearly 98,000 outages. Communication piece is really the key thing that we all um, think is lacking. Now we have a link on our website so people can actually contact their respective board member directly. You can bring up questions and any suggestions you have. Canyon Lake and Bulverde are in District 6 under Paul Graff. And obviously, we know a lot of viewers, they lost a lot during the most recent freeze. So if you lost any frozen food because of these outages, you actually might be able to replace it. Under a recent disaster declaration, SNAP beneficiaries in Bear, Comal, and other surrounding counties, you can actually request replacement food. You call 211, choose option 2. Requests can then be sent through the end of the month. Well, this weekend, first responders are training with the Texas A&M Task Force at a disaster city and college station, preparing for the worst disasters before they happen. In this scenario, local and federal re responders are performing searches and rescues amid collapsed buildings with contaminated material. Planning has been happening for months long before that deadly earthquake in Turkey and Syria and the train derail der derailment in Ohio. But the skills being practiced here mirror what's unfolding in real life. We practice exactly the way that we are going to respond, and this task force has probably responded um, more than any other team in the country. So under three piles of rubble are 10 volunteer victims at any given time. They're protected in tunnels, but the responders are training as if they were in grave danger. That training will finish today. Well, San Antonio unveiled the plans for the $2.5 billion airport project. On top of the actual beautification aspects, what could this new airport look mean for our local economy? To answer that question and talk about the growth of local businesses and the future of the Alamo City, the president and CEO of Greater SATX joining us live on Leading SA Today at 8 a.m. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., for the full conversation. Time now, 640, 46 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, a French bulldog Aww. puppy that's hilariously described as a fire-breathing demon. Oh, this took a turn. Is looking to get adopted for the fourth time. I'm now intrigued. <laughs> All right, and after the break, game day. San Antonio football fans, whew, today is the day you've been waiting for. Game day for the Brahmas. We're getting ready for football, and obviously, Dwayne The Rock Johnson in town. Isn't he going to all four games? He is going to all four games. Are they all at different times? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm concerned about his schedule You here. cannot be at all four places at one time. Okay. Well, maybe The Rock can. I don't know. 46 degrees at 641. Mia will have her forecast when we come back. Pro Football Coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. It's game day this afternoon. 
This is a fan. This is a fan. It's a Brahma. Because we're fans of the Brahmas. <laughs> See what we right. did there? Hey, in case that insiders, they're not just going to get one of these cool fans, but they're also going to pack the bullpen at the Alamo Dome to kick off the San Antonio Brahmas inaugural season. So, as you can see behind us, Brahmas already in town. Alamo Dome decked out. We got the Brahma signs, the gold and black all over the stands. The team actually got a chance to look around before holding a team lunch with San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg. So 30,000 plus fans expected to be on hand today. We asked head coach Heinz Ward, pretty cool still, how he feels about it. That is a lot of people, but you know, that's expected, man. That's just the city of San Antonio. They support their teams through and through. Um, you know, I didn't have nothing to do with the color scheme, I promise. <laughs> but uh, that was a big part of the reason why I wanted to be the head coach here. Um, opportunity presented itself. Uh, me having uh, worked during the executive side, during the AAF with the commanders, I saw firsthand how passionate the fans were here. Now to bring football back to the city of San Antonio, uh, now I'm on the coaching side of it now. Uh, I know expectations are high. All right, obviously making a joke about the golden black because he played for the Steelers all those years. XFL owner Dwayne The Rock Johnson expected to be in town today for the Brahma's home opener. He doesn't like even he have pads wearing yes, that jersey. Today. And he's <laughs> for the XFL it's season like tight over. on him. So Sarah, you asked how can he be in all these four games at one time. Yesterday, two games, he was in Arlington. So we asked the team what it meant to them to, yes, smell what The Rock is cooking. Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I don't think I've really met many actors in my life, and obviously I've watched The Rock a ton growing up, so hopefully I get to meet him, you know, one-on-one -on -one and say what's up to him, but um, he's just done so much for this league and for our team, so I really appreciate him and all he's done. All right, so kickoff in the Dome, the Brahmas and the St. Louis Battlehawks. What name? Today, 2 p.m., Battle and if Hawks. you don't go to the game, which we, you know, insist that you do, you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. Best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. Look at, look at With you. the cool insiders. Oh, little yeah. Fan. This is why you little fan. Little fan. I love <laughs> Not little. It, it's, it's not. It's, it's not. A Sarah, ball. like, basically challenged me to play pickleball. Well, I thought it looked like a pickleball uh, racket, but yeah. no. It's a fan. It's we'll a fan. need our fans Thank today. Thank you. That actually feels quite that. nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so this afternoon, it is going to be warmer than what we saw yesterday, but really all things considered, I think it's going to be pretty nice out there. I just walked outside uh, during the commercial break. We have some breaks in the clouds here in San Antonio. We actually might find another nice sunrise out there, uh, but kind of just piggybacking off of what we've seen this past week, a lot of ups and downs in terms of our temperature trend. We were able to hit the low 80s last Tuesday and Wednesday. We had that front move through Wednesday night and that knocked our high temperatures down into the cooler than average category. Thursday, Friday, and yesterday. But again, that's going to change this afternoon as we see that southwest wind only at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, so not incredibly breezy out there. But that combined with some more peaks of sunshine out there this afternoon should help those temperatures climb now into the warmer than average category. We've got a forecast high around 75 here in San Antonio. But again, all things considered on a bad way to wrap up the weekend. It is chilly out there right now, though, so if you're waking up, fixing to step out the door, you likely will want the extra layer, but you're probably not going to need that by this afternoon. 46 right now here in San Antonio. It's 45 in Kerrville as well as Rock Springs, 47 in Del Rio, 41 in Carrizo Springs, 43 in Kennedy waking up here this morning. Again, I do think we will find some clouds out there throughout the day, but we should find some sun, especially this afternoon, helping those temperatures climb around 75 here in town by 4 to 5 p.m., 72 by about 6 p.m. All in all, warmer than than average. Our average high for this time of year is 68 degrees. You can see we are well above that here later today. 77 in Pleasanton, 79 in Contula, 77 in Eagle Pass. That forecast high temperature. So we've got those winds that are flipping in from the south. What that essentially is going to do over the next 24 hours, pump in more of that Gulf moisture. So this is a look at our dew points. Also this green color. That's more of the humidity that's going to be rushing back into south central Texas. So a especially tomorrow morning and into Tuesday morning. I do think it's possible that we find some areas of patchy fog, a few of which could be dense in spots. So by the Monday morning drive and Tuesday morning drives, probably a good idea to
to plan on giving yourself some extra time. Stepping out the door, temperatures also continue to warm tomorrow and Tuesday mornings. A bit warmer and muggier out there. Upper 50s, low 60s for those morning lows. Transitioning to the upper 70s tomorrow. How about low 80s on Tuesday? And still warm into Wednesday as we see some drier air move in behind a weak front that's going to push through south central Texas Tuesday night. Maybe an isolated shower possible there, and it's also going to be pretty windy there on Wednesday as well. So that's all associated with an area of low pressure out in the Pacific. We will keep eyes on that as it tracks eastward here over the next few days and see exactly what it means in terms of that rain chance. Again, right now it's a pretty isolated chance for a few showers. Unfortunately, the better energy looks to be just to the north of our area, but still we'll keep eyes on it because as we all know, we need the rain. Fantastic. All right, man. Thank you so much. 650, 46 degrees out. Up next, a Kansas City business owner looking to help kids pay for their lunch got some help from the Chiefs. How she was able to make the big play in just moments. Well done. All right, taking a live look out at the roadways. Not too much happening right now on some people out there. Headed to church maybe. Nice uh, Sunday fun day brunch. Who knows if anything pops up. We'll keep you posted. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs' recent win at the Super Bowl was a huge benefit to one area school. So it started with wooden coasters, cups, and yard signs. Business owner Annie Stowe of Annie's Barn made enough money from Chiefs' merchandise that she could actually pay off student lunch debt at Pawnee Elementary. Reminds me of Park and Rec. So with the help of some donations on Facebook, get this, she paid off $2,000 in lunch debt. She's calling it out of the Red Friday. And she's hoping it'll be an annual tradition. Well, meanwhile, this dog that's famously hard to handle has three strikes again him, against him, but he's not out yet. Ralphie is a one-year-old French bulldog described by a New York shelter as a terror in somewhat small package. He was returned again this week after another unsuccessful adoption. So the canine menace went viral through the shelter's ad for Ralphie with phrases including wrath will, will ensure, ensue following his now third failed adoption. The shelter has enrolled Ralphie in a six week boarding and training program, which starts on Monday. Ralphie, I know that you'll, you know, get through that boarding and training program. My dogs went through that. Yeah. They came out angels. It was the mirror picture of Ralphie for me. <laughs> He's just staring at himself in the mirror. What can I do? No one loves me. He's turning his life around. <laughs> I have faith in you, Ralphie. All right, time now, 655, 45 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Right now on KSAT.com, we've been talking about it. Dwayne The Rock Johnson expected to be in San Antonio today for the Brahmas game. And he is not empty handed. He said he's bringing good luck along, a good luck charm in XFL San Antonio Brahma's football. Johnson says he'll be attending all four XFL games this weekend. Our very own RJ Marquez reports when he arrives in San Antonio. The Rock could announce that the city might, wait for it, host this year's XFL championship game. Very cool. And the Alamo Beer Company is partnering with the Brahmas ahead of today's game. The company recently unveiled its Brahmas themed beer, which is its signature golden American blonde ale, the strong, stubborn, straight up San Antonio <laughs> beverage. I like that. It's apparently 4.7% alcohol. The Alamo Beer Company will open today from noon until 8 p.m. for pregame and after party celebrations. Well, there you go. All right, let's get you one final look at today's day planner. If you are stepping out to the game or just going to have any watch parties here on KSAT 12, temperatures headed for the warmer 70s out there this afternoon. Ooh. Upper 70s, how about low to mid 80s by Tuesday and Wednesday? That's also when we'll monitor for that small rain chance to move in and then downright windy for midweek plans. Fantastic. It's going to be a gorgeous day out there. Don't go anywhere. 8 a.m. We have a special show for you. Leading SA, President and CEO of Greater SATX. But until then, you have an hour of GMA.
Hey, we'll see you guys back here at 8 a.m. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Late breaking news this morning, a man shot in the chest in critical condition. What San Antonio police say he was doing just before the gunfire erupted. And the latest on former President Jimmy Carter as he has entered home hospice care in Georgia. And back here at home, a much warmer start than what we saw yesterday. How warm will it get today? What about President's Day? Mia Montgomery is in the house with your full forecast in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday, February 19th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Sunday morning. Hey, you have family in town. Do you have family in town. My parents are in town. Girlfriend's parents are in town. So yesterday we kind of walked around. We really stayed in like the Pearl downtown area. Mm -hmm. Like I say, earlier in the morning, though, it was so cold. I had like double jacket on. My well, parents I, were making fun of me. Well, yeah, they're like, you're now a Texan. Yeah, they're like, you're <laughs> you're upset that it's 50 degrees. I was like, you don't understand. And Mia, even yesterday afternoon, it was still pretty chilly. I, I took a walk and I had a giant fleece on. Yeah, and it just kept feeling colder and colder. It was just cool. Yeah, it was a cooler than average start to the weekend. Highs yesterday were only able to climb into the 50s here in San Antonio, but heading out for any end of the weekend plans today, temperatures are going to be noticeably warmer out there this afternoon. Now, yes, it is a warmer start than where we were 24 hours ago this morning, but it is still chilly enough to make you reach for the extra layer. If you are stepping out the door for any Sunday morning activities, we are in the 40s, a few low 50s out there this 8 a.m. hour. 46 over at SA International, 50 over in Holotus, 47 in Bulverde, 51 in Canyon Lake, and 50 over in New Braunfels. Now, we did see a little bit of a break in the mid and upper level cloud cover as the sun was coming up. Made for a really nice sunrise out there this morning. I do think we will find some pockets of mid and high clouds that continue to stream across portions of the area this morning. But overall, especially this afternoon, I think we'll find some more peaks of sunshine there as well. Overall, helping those temperatures warm. How about mid 70s now for your daytime highs later this afternoon? So there's that warming trend that quickly takes over today. And really, that's going to stick with us into the first half of the upcoming work week. We're also going to see some additional Gulf moisture work its way back in, which very well could lead to some areas of patchy morning fog tomorrow and into Tuesday. Temperatures will be warmer in the mornings too. upper 50s, low 60s, transitioning to the 70s and eventually the 80s. We do have a weak front that moves in Tuesday night. Not going to pack too big of a punch in terms of our temperatures, but it will make it pretty windy on Wednesday and maybe spark a few isolated showers Tuesday night and into the early morning hours of our Wednesday. We'll get you a full look at the week ahead coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Well, starting off this morning with the latest on the 39th president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, now receiving hospice care at his home in Georgia. The Carter Center, the president's charity, made the announcement Saturday saying the family is asking for privacy at this time. While they want privacy, the statement added, Quote, the family is grateful for the concern shown by so many of his admirers. Carter is 98 years old and both the oldest living president and the longest lived U.S. president. He has battled health issues in recent years, including hip surgery in 2019. And in 2015, he battled cancer that spread to his liver and brain. Once there are any more updates, we will bring them to you. Back here at home, new this morning, charges expected for two suspects accused of shooting a man on the city's west side near Memorial High School. San Antonio police tell us a man in his early 50s was visiting a friend at a home on Pickford Avenue. Just before 1 a.m., they say he walked up to the door. Two men approached him, asked why he was on their front porch. Moments later, the two suspects got angry. One pulled out a gun, shot the man in the chest. He was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Right now, police do have those two suspects in custody. San Antonio firefighters worked to put out a house fire on the city's south side. This happened just after one this morning on a home on Beatrice Avenue near South Flores. Firefighters arrived to flames coming out of the front window of the home. They were able to contain that fire to one room. No one was home at the time, and there is no word yet on that damage to that house. 
All right, two international walking festivals now underway this morning. Downtown officials with the nonprofit organization AVA America's Walking Club in town today. So they are preparing to host the opening ceremony and parade of flags. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us live from King William Park to tell us more about this event. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Sarah. I am here at the King Williams Park. This is such a unique event. There are two walking festivals happening today, the 18th annual Olympiad and the IML Texas Trail Roundup. Now, registration starts at 9 a.m. You can register on site here at the park. But joining me right now is the international ambassador of the AVA Walking Club, David Bonwitz. Good and then, Good morning. And he's going to tell us more about this event. Well, we have an event here that has taken place all over the world. It's actually the 18th, takes place every two years. We've never had one in the United States. And so we are excited to be here in San Antonio with our walking event. And we have today a special pre-walk, which is a community walk. So as, uh, as was said, come down to King William Park, register, Nine o'clock starts registration, 10 o'clock starts the walk. Now this is non-competitive. All our sports, AVA Americans Walking Club does non-competitive sports. And so we have walks all this week. Uh, you can come in, you can register for a day pass and walk with us five kilometers, 10 kilometers, 21 kilometers, and for the hardcore, a marathon, 42 kilometers. It's exciting, and the most exciting part is meeting people. We have people from 26 countries that are here for this event. 41 states are represented. It's an exciting time, and we are so happy to be in a very walkable city, San Antonio. Wonderful, and you mentioned all the people from the different states that you're um, also including, let's see here, the opening ceremony and the flag parades. What well, you what we're gonna do when we finish this community walk, we'll be forming up here here around noon for a flag parade that will go into Levita. And that's where our, uh, what we call Olympiad Village is going to be. So all the nations will be walking behind their flags into the, the village in order to have a big opening ceremony. And we'll, that's when the Olympiad actually begins. Wonderful, David, thank you so much for this interview. We'll wrap this up, but in the next half hour, we'll have more information on how you could participate today. And on our website, there's a list of what time those events start and where you can be to be a part of it. Reporting live downtown, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Well, San Antonio unveiled the plans for the $2.5 billion airport project. On top of all the beautification aspects, what could this mean for our local economy? So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Jenna Saucedo Herrera, the president and CEO of Greater SATX. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. So Jenna, when you heard of and saw the airport plans, you know, what was your immediate reaction? Oh, well, this project has been a long time coming for our San Antonio community. So I've seen various plans along the way. I will tell you, though, that seeing those renderings that were unveiled last week just make it all more real. And I couldn't be more thrilled about the, the progress for the International Airport. So, Jenna, how involved was Greater SATX in this airport discussion? Oh, we've been heavily involved. As you can imagine, you know, SAT is the largest airport serving all of South Texas. And so it's a top priority for business leaders. It's a top priority for us. And so I served on the planning committee along with the airport, but beyond just supporting terminal development, we also worked with the airport and Visit San Antonio to launch a private uh, air service fund this last year. So we're hoping to see some tangible results in 2023. Okay, so taking a step back, big picture, what does this $2.5 billion plan mean for the future of our local economy? It's significant. You know, as I just mentioned, this is a top priority for existing businesses here in San Antonio, but also potential new businesses that we're working to recruit. And so as we continue to invest big in SAT, we'll continue to see real results. But it's all about that nonstop service capacity uh, and also, you know, creating a more inviting welcome for visitors that are coming to the San Antonio community. But to put it into perspective, you know, the airport travels about 10 million passengers per year, and we're aiming to double that over the next couple of decades. So investing the 2.5 billion, a little bit higher than that, actually, uh, sends the world a strong signal that San Antonio is ready for growth. So Greater SATX is calling 2023 the year of winning together. So what exactly does that mean for our region? 
It means simply that a lot of the efforts and conversations we've been having in recent years will come to reality. And I think the airport is the prime example of that. But you'll see more about that from a corporate attraction perspective, from a talent attraction perspective, all of the fruits of our collective labor uh, in the San Antonio region coming to reality this year. Uh, that's certainly the hope, and I, I truly believe it will be the reality. Now, you guys talked about doubling the amount of people coming through our airport. You have an elaborate five-year plan. What does that consist of? And you know, other than the airport, which is obviously a huge endeavor in itself, what other steps have been taken to go in that direction? The strategy is very simple. It's an elaborate plan with a lot of different tactics and initiatives, but it's all about investing in our people and in our place to secure top quality jobs for San Antonians. So the airport is an example of that, launching a national advertising campaign about living and working in San Antonio is also a part of that. And of course, talent attraction and retention and the most important part of what we do, making sure that businesses want to be in San Antonio, want to scale in San Antonio, and want to invest in San Antonio. At the end of the day, it's about jobs. Uh, and over the last three to four years, we as an organization have secured about 28,000 jobs for the region, but we need more. And we are competing not just at a, at a national scale, but at a global scale for those jobs. And we believe San Antonians are in the perfect position uh, to support the employers that we're working to lure here. Well, Jenna, Jenna with Greater SATX, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for our viewers, you can watch this full interview later on this morning on KSAT.com. All right, time now, 8 11, 47 degrees out. Well, first responders are training with the AM Task Force at Disaster City what they're doing to prepare for possible future emergencies. It's such an amazing program. I'm glad we're doing a story on it because I didn't even know about it. Yeah. And after the break, how PEC is responding to power outages from our recent ice storm, what specifically went wrong, and how they're addressing consumers and customers' frustrations. 47 degrees at 8.11 this morning. Mia Montgomery is in for Sarah. This Sunday morning, hopefully things are going to start warming up. She'll tell us about that when we come back. Welcome back. Pertinalis Electric Co-op held their first board meeting since the ice storm that caused extensive outages for people across the hill country. Board members say improving the outage map during possibly dangerous weather is their top priority. Customers say the outage map was not providing accurate restoration times. PEC says they are aware of people's frustration, saying the outage map calculates restoration times based on historical data or staff will manually enter those restoration times. PEC says staff struggled to enter restoration times while managing nearly 98,000 outages system wide. The communication piece is really the key thing that we all um, think is lacking. We have a link on our website so people can contact their board member directly with questions and suggestions. Canyon Lake and Bulverde are in District 6 under Paul Graff. And some people who lost their frozen food because of the outages may have it replaced. So SNAP benefici beneficiaries in Bear, Comal, and other surrounding counties can request replacement food by calling 211 and choosing option number two. All right, so obviously we were just talking about the aftermath of that ice storm. It seems like it was so long ago. I was complaining about it being only 50 degrees yesterday, but when you put it in perspective, Mia, I mean... It's it much be, warmer. Yeah, exactly. It could be a lot worse, right? Yes, yesterday it was an incredibly cold start today. We were in the 30s. Highs only managed to climb into the 50s. Now this morning, of course, waking up a bit warmer in the 40s and 50s. And this afternoon, we're going to see those afternoon highs climb into the 70s. So overall, a nice end to the weekend across South Central Texas with that warming trend taking over. That's going to continue into the upcoming work week as well. But also what we're going to find here over the next 24 hours, more of that Gulf moisture is going to start to work back into the region as well, which means humidity levels will increase and that could lead to some areas of patchy morning fog both tomorrow and into Tuesday.
maybe a few of which could be dense in spots, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time for the morning drive. And then as we head into the Tuesday night to Wednesday time frame, we have a weak front that's going to move through the area that will make it plenty windy on Wednesday and only spark an isolated chance for maybe a few showers, better chances of finding that the farther north that you go. So we'll time all of it out, starting off with a look down from space here, satellite and radar across South Central Texas. Again, you can see some of that cloud cover that is especially moving in from the west here. Still a little bit of a break in some of that cloud cover across our far eastern counties. You can see it though, looking outside with live cam here this hour. Still chilly out there, 46 over at SA International and relatively calm winds on hand. Those winds will be out of the southwest for the most part throughout the remainder of this Sunday at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, 62 by 11 a.m., 66 through the lunchtime hour. And then as we head into the afternoon again, I do think we will find some peaks of sunshine out there as well, helping those daytime highs climb into the warmer than average category. Mid 70s expected here in San Antonio. So around 75 officially here in town is that forecast high 73 in Bull Verde, stretching back over to Bernie 77 in Floresville over to Poteet as well as Pleasanton 72 in Utopia and 75 in Savannah later this afternoon. So you'll want the jacket early this morning, but you're likely not going to need that extra la layer later this afternoon as well. Now I mentioned that humidity that's going to continue to pump back in here over the next 24 hours or so. So that could lead to some areas of fog out there. Notice by Monday morning drive time, some of which could pretty much reduce visibility in spots. So we'll keep eyes on that as well. Overall, that warming trend is going to be a big story here over the next several days. So while we're topping off in the low to mid 70s this afternoon, upper 70s tomorrow around 78 degrees here in San Antonio, Tuesday and into Wednesday. How about low to potentially even mid 80s, 83 by Tuesday and 84 for midweek plans. But that's the time frame where we're going to monitor that weak front that looks to move in. Again, it doesn't really look to have a huge impact on our temperatures in terms of really cooling us down, but it could spark that isolated chance for rain Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning. That is all associated with this area of low pressure out in the Pacific. Essentially what that's going to do over the next couple of days is track eastward by Tuesday morning. It's approaching northern Mexico and then notice here as we head into early Wednesday morning, the better energy and I think rain chances with this particular system looks to be north of our area, central North Texas, crossing over the Red River and into Oklahoma. But still, we could find a few isolated showers out there into early Wednesday before that all moves farther eastward. We start to see more sunshine return into Wednesday afternoon, and it also will be windy out there with some gusts upwards of about 30 miles per hour, maybe even 35 miles per hour at times. Overall, we'll just call it about a 20% potential, and we'll keep eyes on the data here over the next few days. Until then, temperature-wise, we are in the 40s and 50s right now, 46 in San Antonio, 44 in Uvalde, it's 46 in Rock Springs, and 49 over in Kerrville. This afternoon is going to be pretty nice out there for any weekend plans that you may have with those daytime highs climbing into the warmer than average 70s. And if you like that spring-like feel, yes. I know, Max, we were talking about that earlier, you're really going to like this week because for the most part, those temperatures look to stay warmer than average in the upper 70s and low 80s. I know a lot of students don't have school tomorrow. All right, Some people yes. have the day off for President's Day. So 78 degrees. It's a nice Not day. Not too bad. Not too bad. Right. Thank you, ma'am. You bet. You 821, 49 degrees out. Well, fiesta season. Can you believe that it is near? Oh. What this year's NIOSA medal represents and what it means to the San Antonio Conservation Society. That's still ahead. Uh, before we head to break, quick look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, four, one, two, fireball one, daily four, six, two, seven, three, fireball zero. Cash five, three, four, 20, 33, 35, Texas lotto. Three, four, 31, 38, 41, 48, and Powerball, eight, 21, 31, 32, 37, Powerball 23, power play four. Good luck. Good morning and welcome back. Starting off with some entertainment news. Zach Galifianakis set for a major role in Disney's remake 
of the popular 2002 animated movie, Lilo and Stitch. Is it a remake or is it a sequel? I don't know. Oh, look at that tease. Such a good movie, though. This is so good. I hope it's not like an actual remake. I so, know. entertainment publication Variety reports the actor is signed on for the live action production. Oh, it's planned for release on streaming service Disney Plus. Well, then I'm out. This is the comedian's first time back on the big screen since, oh, get this, 2018, the Disney movie A Wrinkle in Time. You have Disney Plus, right? Yes. All right, so you're going to watch it? Probably. All right, that's fair. Time now, 826, 49 degrees out. I took a look outside with the roads. People might be heading out to Sunday service or mass or brunch. We're not seeing any incidents on the road at this time. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, February 19th, and tomorrow is President's Day. I know a lot of people will have the day off from work and school, but I'll be here in the morning. There we go. I'll be here at 9 a.m. Here's the thing, though. If you are out and about, Mia, you were telling us it could be a gorgeous day out there. Right, especially today. It's just going to be a lot warmer compared to what we saw out there yesterday. So if you like that spring-like feel, you're going to like this afternoon. It is still chilly out there this morning. Not quite as cold as what we woke up to yesterday morning. But for the most part, we're in the 40s. We have a few low 50s out there this hour. Now 46 over at SA International. Same over at Simpson on the south side of Bear County. 44 at Kelly and 49 over at Randolph. Now in terms of of the humidity as of right now is still pretty low across South Central Texas, so it is pretty pleasant to step out to, but you will want the extra layer. Not going to need it, though, by this afternoon as we see that warming trend really take over. So we'll be around 58 by 10 a.m., around 70 by 1 p.m., and then as we head into this afternoon, those temperatures will continue to climb for the most part. Daytime highs topping off in the low to mid 70s across South Central Texas. For context, our average high for this time of year is around 68 degrees. So for the first half of the weekend, we were cooler than average. And now for the back half of the weekend, we're starting to see those thermometers climb into the warmer than average category. And really, as we head into the first half of the upcoming work week and potentially the entirety of the upcoming week, that warming trend is going to take over. Warmer than average temperatures will continue with more 70s and maybe even a few 80s in the forecast. The humidity is going to build, especially over the next 24 hours. And what that's going to do for us is allow for some areas of patchy fog tomorrow morning and into Tuesday morning as well. So we're going to keep eyes on that, especially if you do have to go to work tomorrow and then into Tuesday and then Tuesday night and into the early Wednesday morning time frame is when we're looking to see our next week cold front to move in. This one's not going to have as big of an effect on our temperatures, but it will make it windy on Wednesday and it also could spark just a few isolated showers Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning. Not the best rain chance, but it's something we'll be monitoring over the next few days. We'll be sure to get you a full detailed look of what we're expecting into the upcoming week in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mia. Just new into our newsroom. We've been telling you about the overnight shooting on the city's west side. We have now learned that the man who was shot has died. According to preliminary reports from police, a man in his early 50s showed up at a home looking for his wife. That's when police say an argument broke out between the victim and two other men. Uh, one of those men pulled out a gun and started shooting, hitting the victim in the chest. He was taken to the hospital, but he died from his injuries. Those two suspects now in custody. and We do expect to learn the charges throughout the day. We are following the latest with the shooting out of Memphis. According to the Memphis Police Department's Twitter page, they were called to not just one location, but multiple locations at midnight and found multiple victims and one person dead. I believe up to 11 people were involved in this shooting. There is no information on the suspects, and this is an ongoing investigation. And to our top stories this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a case of aggravated robbery around La Cantera. As GMSA's Alyssa Cole reported earlier this morning, it was not a shooting. Police say a 33-year-old man was pistol whipped by a man who had demanded money. It happened around 4.30 this morning, 6100 block of La Cantera near 1604. The victim did suffer a cut on his head. He is expected to be okay. Right now, investigators are working, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. 
a pillar in the local addiction recovery community. That's how friends and family describe Francis Cariaga. The 65 year old died Tuesday night after being hit by a drunk driver while crossing the street with her dog. Her dog also died in the crash. Yesterday, Cariaga's three children hosted a candlelight vigil in her honor. Nearly four dozen people showed up in support. The family tells us their mother battled alcoholism for years, but was able to recover and then give back. She's able to live well and show other people how to, to do the same. So I'm very proud of my mother. We're very, very proud of her recovery and what she did towards the end of what she was doing in, in her life and inspired a lot of people to do the same thing. Those who attended wore purple. Francis's favorite color it also happens to be the color representing the addiction recovery movement. They say family, the family says the turnout just shows how many lives their mother touched. Preparing for the worst disasters before these disasters happen. Now this weekend, first responders are training with the Texas A&M Task Force at Disaster City and College Station. So in this scenario that they're training, local and federal responders are performing searches and rescues with collapsed buildings and contaminated materials. Planning has been happening for months for this day, for this weekend, long before the deadly earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and of course that train derailment in Ohio. But the skills being practiced here in College Station, they mirror what's unfolding in real life. We practice exactly the way that we are going to respond, and this task force has probably responded um, more than any other team in the country. It really is such an amazing program, making sure everyone is as prepared as possible. So under three piles of rubble are 10 volunteer victims at any given time. They're actually protected in tunnels, but the responders are training as if they were in grave danger. That training out in College Station, that will continue through today. The ballot is now set for the May 6th election. It, the always crowded mayor's race has eight challengers looking to beat Mayor Ron Nirenberg, who is seeking his fourth and final term. The first term council members in District 1 and 2, Mario Bravo and Jalen McKee Rodriguez, each face a similar number of challengers. Meanwhile, Anna Sandoval's resignation in January embattled Clayton Perry's decision not to run again mean their prospective seats on the northwest and northeast sides are also up for grabs. Now, Proposition A, which was promoted as a so-called San Antonio Justice Charter, was added to the election on Thursday after a petition drive. Its focus on controversial attempts to decriminalize marijuana possession and abortion seem likely to drive a larger voter turnout. Well, back here at home, we've been covering the latest with former President Jimmy Carter. He has now entered home hospice care in Georgia. The 98 year old is the oldest living president. ABC's Derek Dennis brings us the latest from his family. The 39th president, Jimmy Carter, is now receiving hospice care at his home in Plains, Georgia. The Carter Center saying in a statement that after a series of hospital stays, Carter decided to receive hospice care instead of additional medical intervention. He has the full support of his family and his medical team. While they want privacy, the statement added, his family is grateful for the concern shown by so many of his admirers. And his grandson took to Twitter Saturday to say, I saw both of my grandparents yesterday. They are at peace and as always their home is full of love. Thank you all for your kind words. Carter is 98 years old and both the oldest living president and the longest lived U.S. president. He has battled health issues in recent years including hip surgery in 2019 and in 2015 he battled cancer that had spread to his liver and brain. Carter is the only president from Georgia. He served in the White House from 1977 to 1981. After leaving office, he and his wife Rosalind opened the Carter Center, earning a Nobel Peace Prize in 2002 for his work there. He is also well known for his work with Habitat for Humanity, building homes for those in need. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Well, two international walking festivals are underway this morning in our downtown. Officials with the nonprofit organization AVA America's Walking Club. So they are preparing to kick off a week-long citywide event. GMSA's Alyssa Cole joining us live from King William Park, telling us much more about these events. So, Alyssa, how's it looking yes. out there? Yes. 
Yes, good morning. As people are finally, you know, starting to show up, we're getting closer to that time where the community walk will be starting at 10 a.m. But everyone watching this report, as you all hear about the details that we're about to share with you, feel free to come down to King William Park and register at 9 a.m. It is still open and you can be a part of the event. But joining me right now is the international ambassador of the festival, David Bonwitz, and he's going to tell us about the opening ceremonies that's happening later today. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, we're going to have a parade that's going to leave from here, from King William Park, going to walk down to the Arneson Theater uh, in Levita, and it's a parade of flags, all the flags of the nations that are part of the our international organization. Uh, and with that, we have 26 countries represented, we have 41 states, it'll be a big parade, and then we'll have a big opening ceremony uh, starting the actual Olympiad. And so we are so excited to have the Olympiad. We which has been taking place, uh, this is the 18th, and it's never been in the United States, never been in the Americas. So we are excited to be able to host this and most excited to be doing it in such a walkable city of San Antonio. Perfect, David. And before we wrap up this interview, if you could just talk about the purpose of walking through the community, what are people getting out of this? Well, it's, we always get asked, why are you walking? And when they think that we're doing a fundraiser or something. But we're walking for ourselves. We're walking for our health. Everybody knows that walking is good for you. It's one of the easiest exercises to do. All you have to do is strap on your shoes and get out and put one foot in front of the other. And it will do wonders for your health. Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much, David, for speaking with me. Much appreciated. Again, here at King William Park, registration starts at 9 a.m. The community walk will start at 10 a.m. There's still time to come on down and be a part. We'll have more information listed on our website a little later today at ksat.com. Reporting live downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. All right, canoes, kayaks, and stand-up paddleboard rentals soon coming to Woodlawn Lake and Elmendorf Lake this spring. An agreement between the San Antonio Parks and Rec Department and the Expedition School will make this partnership possible. The school will also offer health and wellness programs, camps, and professional water safety courses. Well, Fiesta season, can you believe it's fast approaching and Niosa Metal has officially been revealed? That's right. All right, so this year's design features a woman with flowers in her hair. Also, some San Antonio landmarks like the Alamo, the Riverwalk, and of course, the Tower of America. So officials from the San Antonio Conservation Society says this medal is its launch into celebrating the 13 women who founded the organization. You can buy the medal now on the NIOSA website for $12. This year's NIOSA will be on April 25th through the 28th. All right, time now, 841, 51 degrees out. Next, the latest with the San Antonio Brahmas. Let's go Brahmas. What the coach and team had to say after yesterday's team lunch, plus what the rock is bringing to town. I think he's bringing some heat. Can you I smell say it? That I'm not getting into that. <laughs> uh, our last producer brought in all the uh, the wrestling cliches. I'm just going to say it is going to be gorgeous out there today. So if you don't go to the Brahmas game, head outside, enjoy the Alamo City. We're going to check with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's game day this afternoon. That's good. That was this quick is, feet. This is our uh, KSAT Insiders Brahma's fan. Fan. It's it's a swag. It's not a paddle. It's not a pickleball. <laughs> I don't think anyone thought that. Except it for looks right like now. a giant pickleball paddle. So the reason <laughs> we have this is because there's a special KSAT Insiders Woo! event. We're packing the bullpen at the Alamo Dome, kicking off the Brahma's inaugural season. That's right. So as you can see, but. Well, the Brahmas are in town, and the Alamo Dome is decked out in Brahma signs with black and gold all over the stands. The team got a chance to look around before holding a team lunch with the San Antonio Mayor, Ron Nuremberg, in attendance. 30,000 wow. plus fans are expected to be That's there today, awesome. Max, and we asked head coach Heinz Ward how he felt about it. That is a lot of people, but, you know, that's expected, man. That's just the city of San Antonio. They support their teams through and through. Um, you know, I didn't have nothing to do with the color scheme, I promise. <laughs> but uh, that was a big part of the reason why I wanted to be the head coach here. Um, opportunity presented itself. Uh, me having uh, worked during the executive side, during the AAF with the commanders, I saw firsthand how passionate the fans were here. Now to bring football back to the city of San Antonio, uh, now I'm on the coaching side of it now. Uh, I know expectations are high. 
Obviously him alluding to the Steelers colors, the team that he played for for so many years. And obviously this man, myth the legend, XFL owner Dwayne The Rock Johnson, expected to be in town today for the Brahma's home opener, just like he was yesterday for the XFL season opener in Arlington. So he asked the team what it meant to them to have The Rock in attendance. Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, I don't think I've really met many actors in my life, and obviously I've watched The Rock a ton growing up, so hopefully I get to meet him, you know, one-on-one -on -one and say what's up to him, but um, he's just done so much for this league and for our team, so I really appreciate him and all he's done. Jack really bringing the emotion. Kickoff at the Dome between the Brahmas and St. Louis Battlehawks today, 2 p.m., and here's the thing, if you don't go to the KSAT Insider event, if you don't go to the game, you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. The Rock says he's bringing along good luck charm to the game today, and man, he's bringing along some heat too. Essentially, Ooh, go right, Brahmas. go Brahmas. It's going to be a nice day out there for any watch party plans that you may have. If you are actually going out to watch the game, it's going to be a nice way to end the weekend, especially if you like kind of that warmer weather. So yesterday, again, it was cooler than average. Daytime highs were in the 50s. This afternoon, we're expected to climb into the 70s. And of course, this follows what has been an interesting week temperature wise here in San Antonio. Early last week, we had those warmer than average temperatures. We climbed into the 80s Tuesday and Wednesday. We had that front that moved in Wednesday night. And then that just brought back the 50s Thursday, Friday and yesterday. But that is going to change as we head into this afternoon. It is a chilly start out there, so you will want the extra layer stepping out early this morning in the 40s and a few low 50s. I will say I was checking the five minute observations taken over at the airport just a second ago, actually saying that we're already climbing into the low 50s over at SAT. So that just goes to show that that warming trend is already taking place here today. That will continue to be the theme throughout the remainder of this Sunday. 58 by 10 a.m. 66 by lunchtime around 73 around the 2 p.m. hour and then in terms of those daytime highs highs this afternoon, especially if we find more peaks of sunshine. Those do look to top off in the mid 70s for a good portion of the area around 75 here in San Antonio, 77 in Pleasanton, Gonzales, 73 in Canyon Lake, 71 in Rock Springs this afternoon and 75 over in Del Rio. Now something else that we're going to find, especially by tomorrow morning, south winds in place, which is what's going to pump more of that Gulf moisture back into the region. You can see this green color that makes its return from the south. A look at dew points. How we measure the moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere. Those do look to rise a bit more by wake up time tomorrow. So not only is that going to keep our overnight lows a little bit warmer, waking up to the muggier upper 50s and low 60s tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, and especially into early Wednesday, but that also could lead to some areas of patchy fog out there, especially tomorrow into Tuesday morning. So that's just something that we're going to need to keep eyes on, especially if you are planning on hitting the the road in the morning as well. Temperatures in the afternoons climbing into the upper 70s tomorrow and then into the 80s by Tuesday and Wednesday there as well. Now before we can get to Wednesday, Tuesday night, we are expecting a weak front to move into the area. That's going to make it pretty windy for any midweek plans, but it could spark an isolated chance for a few showers. There's an area of low pressure out in the Pacific that's going to approach the Lone Star State here over the next Next few days. As of right now, the better energy associated with that system looks to be north of our area, but still we could find maybe a few isolated showers. And then after that front moves in, temperatures not really taking too big of a hit. Still going to be warmer than average in the 50s in the mornings and then daytime highs near about 80. Wow. Wow. Oh, look, I know we need the rain, right? <laughs> right. But selfishly, these next two days are going to be gorgeous. You're kind of excited about the spring. Oh, my. So my parents are in town and we've just been trying to walk around. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. It's going to be so fine. There we go. It's going to be great. Thank you, Mia. You're welcome. Bringing us good energy. There you go. Thanks. Mia. I'm now 851, 51 degrees out. 2022 was a record breaking year for recalls. Ooh. So coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you how to find out if something in your fridge, pantry, or garage is one of those items. All right, let's take a final look at that seven day forecast again today.
going to be nice out there. Temperatures climbing into the 70s and then that warming trend is really going to continue tomorrow, Tuesday and into Wednesday. Overall, your President's Day could start off with some patchy morning fog in the upper 50s here in town. And then those temperatures just continue to warm. And of course, we'll monitor for that isolated rain chance Tuesday night and into Wednesday morning. All right, Sarah, what do you have to show us? Go Brahmas! There we go. All right, so we've done doing a great job promoting the Brahmas today. I didn't even think about this. What if The Rock were in town watching, watching us? Oh, Whoa. hi. <laughs> Hello, Come Rock. on down to the studio. Bring us a jersey. We're going to get you signed in and everything. <laughs> but hey, go Brahmas. 2 p.m. on KSAT.